All right. Hey, guys, this is Arnie again. And uh, uh, we are here with the uh, uh, health, love, and life uh, show with um, uh, on the the Going Solo Network with CeCe Schatz, actually. She's the kind uh, host here with us doing all the behind the scenes pictures and great stuff that she does. And we're also over here on Instagram. So it's waving over here, my Instagram folks. Um, and I think this is our fourth show. I think so. Either way. And tonight we're going to talk about fear and how we can manage fear versus having fear manage us. Um, and so I'm going to get into some strategies here and some things. And if any of you are out there and you want to send a, a question over, Cece will get it and she'll let me know. Um, but before we start, let's talk about how you can connect with me. I am on Facebook. You can look me up at uh, Arnie Fonseca Jr. You can also look me up at Coach Arnie. Most people just call me Coach Arnie. So you can call me Coach Arnie as well. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn, uh, but you can go over there and look me up, um, Arnie Fonseca Jr. I am also on YouTube, and I think you can go to, um, just look me up, Arnie Fonseca Jr., and I've got some cool videos going up there, especially from the Grand Canyon. I just went to the Grand Canyon last weekend. I did a rim to river back to the rim on South Kaibab and get this guys. I started at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning. It was a little chilly. It had rained and I got a ride over to the trailhead on South Kaibab and then I headed down in the dark all the way to the river and you go across this bridge called Black's Bridge. You go through this tunnel. For those of you who have ever, ever been there, you go across the river, then you head down this trail. And of course, I was in the dark still. And I made it all the way across to the uh, large, gigantic suspension bridge and made it down there in a little over two hours. And then I headed back up. It was amazing. So if you're interested in checking out a video on that, you can go to YouTube as well and you can look up. Um, Rim to River to Rim on South Kaibab. Check that out. It's pretty cool. It's a short video, but you get a kick out of it. I did anyways. Um, so that was kind of fun. And then um, so YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, LinkedIn. I think that's good. Hopefully we can do more stuff. But, um, you know, get out there and um, check some stuff out. Hopefully this um, show is inspiring you to do some different things. And, and maybe tonight's topic, fear, will help you to not be fearful, do crazy stuff. I mean, look, I'm 60. And when I do this stuff, you know, besides my youngest daughter, who gets a kick out of it, um, most people just think I'm crazy. But you know what? They're sitting at home doing nothing. And I'm not saying you have to go do the Grand Canyon unless that's what you want to do. Get a hold of me. I'll give you some tips. But if you want to travel, if you want to start a business, if you want to start a new relationship, if you want to do whatever you want to do, I mean, that's really what this is about. I had a client this afternoon and we're working on a project together and he had all these options. And I listened to him, and he's just a great guy. I just love him. Just so smart. And after he was all done, I said, what do you want to do? What do you want to do with all these amazing options? And he told me. So we're working on that. So that's my question to you guys tonight. What do you want to do? You know, and that's what this is all about. And if, and if fear is holding you back, we're going to get back. We're going to get into that a little bit. If, for, if fear is holding you back from being in a, a a great relationship. Let's talk about it. 
if fear is holding you back from getting in good shape and working on your health, let's talk about it. You know, and if fear is holding you back from just living life, let's talk about it. Um, at the end here, the last five minutes, I'm going to go over our health tip and relationship or love tip and our life tip. So be, be uh, hanging on for that. And, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So let's, let's kind of start our little deep dive and um, about fear. Because look, I know we all deal with it. It's a true, it's a real emotion. We all deal with it. And especially in today's society, the, uh, the words fear and anxiety are kind of um, intertwined a little bit. Uh, I think, I think anxiety is more of a millennial gen. I, God, there was another, the next generation, they have a name. I don't think they're dealing with this. I heard the show Saturday or maybe Sunday and they were calling it, um, uh, Oh, I can't remember. But it was anybody born after 2010. There you go. There's a, there's nine year olds. They're already studying you nine year olds out there because they want to know how to get to you, market you, you know, and, um, find you things that you're interested in or, or get your attention. That's what it's all about. Getting your attention. So, so let's look at fear. First of all, fear is a real emotion, guys. And, um, you know, I used to teach many years ago that when you have two things going on, you have fear and faith going on right here. Fear and faith. Both of them cannot occupy your brain at the same time. It's impossible. It really is. It's either going to be fear or faith. The problem with faith is that you can't see it, touch it, you know, play with it. Um, it's just there. The problem with fear is that you can't see it, touch it, play with it. It's just there. So they're kind of the same thing with a different name, right? Same first letter, four letters. Except one's E-A-R, one's A-I-T-H. That's five letters. Mess that up. So, um, so two things that cannot occupy your brain at the same time. So you're either going to be faithful or full of faith. Or you're going to be fearful or full of fear. And um, those are really tough things to deal with. Okay. Um, it's easy for me to tell you to have faith and believe that things are going to get better or to not be afraid because I'm not in your head. If I was in your head, I could probably see what you're seeing. And that's what I want to do as a coach. That's what I try to do with people in my life. And especially if I'm working with somebody, I want to see the world from their point of view. That way it helps me to understand what you're seeing if it is fear or faith, I want to see what you see, not to go along with it, but to understand it and then encourage you through strategies on how we can move past it, beat it, whatever you want to say. Don't let it take it over us. Don't let it take over our lives. And so that's the problem that you have with fear and faith. So the second thing here is I want to talk to you about is, when you are dealing with a fearful, anxious situation, the first thing I like to do in my own life or with others, let's say, ask a better question or ask a good question. What does this mean? Why am I afraid? Because, see, there are only two, and I've done Facebook stuff on this. There are only two born fears, fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. So when you have a baby or when you are a baby, they check your hearing by getting behind you and making loud, sharp noises. And if any of you have ever been out in a thunderstorm and it hit, I guarantee you, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the biggest NFL football player out there. 
you will jump. We all do. It's natural. That's what we do. Okay. So loud noises and um, falling. And it's to me, I always thought it was high places, but it's not high places. As I did my own study of fear, it was the fact that I could fall. When I was going across that bridge at the Grand Canyon, even though it was 4.30 in the morning, the only thing that I had was my headlight, and I could see through the grates in the bridge going across this beautiful, gigantic river that all I could see was the caps of the water rushing by, which I was above maybe, I don't know, 50 feet. And it was kind of eerie because I have a fear of falling and so i was looking through the grates going man i hope these things don't break even though it's metal and it's been up there for a long time so um it's real those are real fears There's nothing wrong with that but i didn't let it consume me by freezing i just moved the cross and trusted that the bridge was going to hold me up because i had already had evidence that it has because that was my eighth time doing that so I was okay with that. So ask good questions. What does it mean? What am I feeling right now? You know, what's the evidence here? Like going across the bridge. Um, so now what, what happens? One of the things that I like to talk to you next when I talk about fear is the fact that, especially for men, especially, but women do too, we isolate. Whenever we get in a fearful situation, whether it's, Interacting with somebody, something at work, relationship, anything, not feeling good. We isolate. Men are notorious for this. Isolating. It's not a healthy thing to do. It's better to be around people that we can trust. That could be the problem if you don't trust anybody. And, um, but that's okay. Don't isolate because it's just not a good place to be. So try to be around kind, loving, understanding people. So don't isolate. And then um, how about this one as far as managing fear? Um, finding or rediscovering uh, your sense of purpose. Some people call it your why. You know, I like to say it's like, you know, it's really the reason you're here. Because if you're not here for a specific reason, then why are you here? What are you doing on this planet? So when you rediscover that sense of purpose, whatever that might be, you know, I don't, you know, for sometimes a mom is to be a great mom, to be, to take care of their children, their grandchildren, um, to, you know, whatever it might be. For men, it might be, you know, to be um, a politician, a lawyer, a doctor. You know, that's usually what they say. Men love to, they'll mention that stuff first, way before they will family. Um, moms notoriously will always bring up family. And I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, you can't, you can't redo something. And um, that's why men and women are different. Because they, they look at the world differently. And that's okay. And I'm not saying all, but most, but most. So, so refine that purpose. What is it? What's keeping you around? What's getting you up in the morning? You know, what gets you excited? You know, something that maybe it's a little scary. Okay? Not too not too scary where it freezes you, but just enough to to drive you. Something that's in your heart that you might have had, you know, since you're a kid. I mean, I'm, I've been working on a project lately that um, I've been thinking about for over 30 years. I am just excited about it today than I was back then. Even more so because now I'm surrounding myself with people that can do really good things that I could never do. And they're making my dream bigger, not smaller, bigger. Because I don't want to settle for anything. What the heck? Don't settle. Just make your dream bigger. So um, 
So find that sense of purpose. Why are you here? What's, what's the point? And then my fifth step here before we get into some strategies, some real strategies, is focus on good stuff. One of the best ways to kind of get out of your little funk, well, if you're in a fear, is to focus on good things that are happening in your life. Maybe it was a great, excuse me, great phone call. Maybe it was a great um, interaction with somebody at work. Maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it was something you saw on the news if you're watching that kind of stuff. Maybe it was a book you read. Maybe it's just because you're out walking around, you just feel good. I don't know. Um, but focus on good things that are happening in your life. You know, maybe it's because you got the, the first uh, parking spot by the grocery store. And you go, wow, I'm going to have a great day today. Huh? Maybe. So focus on some good stuff. That's going to make a difference, guys, in your life. So now let's get into some more strategies. Um, that might help you to manage fear a little better. Remember, we don't want fear to manage us because fear can be crippling. I mean, literally, fear can cripple you where you don't even move. You don't even move to go to bed and lay down. I mean, that's what depression will do. But um, fear can be crippling. So let's look at this. Um, how about just disrupting fear? You know, some people might call it timeout. I like to use the word interrupt. So let's say you have a fearful moment. Instead of there dwelling on it, go for a walk. Do some exercise. It's pretty simple. Literally, get your butt up. Put your shoes on if they need to be put on. Go for a walk. Jump in a swimming pool. Get on the treadmill. Go work. Go do some push-ups. I don't care. You must interrupt or disrupt this pattern going on in your head. And I promise you, if you keep interrupting it, it will go away. If you don't, it will consume you. Okay? And... Um, some people will use prayer, <clears throat> meditation. They might read, listen to music. These are all things that you can do to interrupt the, the fearful pattern that's going on in your head. Make sense? Okay, good. Um, second one, and this is kind of a big one lately, uh, in the last few years anyways. Breathing. You know, when I was a kid, you know, long time ago, when somebody got upset, the first thing he said, breathe, breathe, right? You've heard that one, right? So when you're fearful, anxious, breathe. I like to do what's called box breathing. You know, you, you inhale for four, one, two, three, four. And then you hold it for seven. And then you exhale for eight. It's called box breathing. So whenever you're feeling anxious, fearful, breathe. It works. It's easy. It's simple. But it doesn't work if you don't do it. Breathe. It's that simple. Okay? Let's look at number three here. Um uh -huh. face it face your fear we've heard that one that's an old one but let me use a little antidote that i use let's pretend you're in the jungle somewhere over in asia or somewhere big thick jungle and you happen to come upon a tiger a big tiger maybe a hungry tiger i don't know but it's a big tiger and remember Tigers can run faster than you can. Tigers can climb trees faster than you can. Tigers can swim faster than you can. A tiger 
can do just about everything better than you except for one thing. Think. That's your only that's your only weapon. Think. So if you run into a tiger in the jungle and you decide to turn around and run, if the tiger sees you, most likely the tiger is going to chase you and kill you. Not because the tiger wants to, but because the tiger is used to reacting, not responding, thinking. They're used to reacting to things moving away from them. So they run after them and kill them. And if they're hungry, they eat them. All right? So don't, don't do that. You got to stand there. Okay? Don't run. Don't climb a tree. They'll come get you. Don't go into the water. They'll come get you there too. So you got to stand there. Okay, stand there and stare at the tiger. This is where we're going to use our brain. Because if you stare at the tiger, now you've narrowed your options to two. Two things are going to happen. I promise. The tiger is going to eat you. That could happen. Because you're just standing there. Number two, the tiger, if he's not or she's not hungry, will walk away. Just like that. Did you know that? Because see, a tiger, just like a lot of people, a tiger understands strength. It respects strength and confidence. So if you stand there and stare at the tiger... And, pre and present yourself as, as bigger than you are. Not You don't have to make a bunch of noise. Just stand there and stare. It's the only shot you got. Because the tiger will eat you if the tiger's hungry. I don't care how proudly you're standing. That's your only shot. Okay? Stare the tiger in the eyes. And that's really your only shot with fear. Because if you run from fear, fear will always chase you and eat you. And if you stand and face your fear, there's a great, great chance that fear is going to go away. Now, I'm not saying that hey, there are some crazy things going on today. That your fear could, could eat you. It could be really bad, you know. Um, you know, I don't know. It depends on your situation. I mean, if it's a domestic violence thing, or I don't know. This in general, fear will eat you. Okay, so don't um, don't run away. Face your fear. Face it. All right, let's look at the next one here. How about this? This is a tricky one. I actually ran across this earlier this week. See the worst. Almost make yourself. Um, I get crazy, I guess. Fear is going to get me. But give yourself evidence of why and how fear is going to get you. Tell yourself, this crazy man is going to come running into my house and going to have a, a gun and a knife and a whip and just make all this stuff up. Because then we're going to look at it and say, so what do you think the chance of something like this happening? And there's a good chance you're going to go, well, not very good, but that's what I was thinking about. So you don't think it's going to happen? Not not a good chance? Nah, probably not. And you continue to have that conversation with yourself. That fear is going to get smaller, smaller, and smaller until pretty soon there is not going to be any more fear. It's pretty simple, okay? So, um, see the worst. Can't hurt. See the worst. And then have a conversation about it. And, like I said, good chance that that stuff's going to go away. All right. Um, what's the next one here? 
all right, we want to find some evidence of this fear. Give me some evidence. What's, what, do you, what, what are you basing this fear on? You know, it's, if it's a relationship thing, it could be that your spouse or your, your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend left you. Okay. So you're basing your new fear on that. It happened to you. All right. That's, that's real. That's what you're basing. So you have some evidence. All right. Nothing wrong with that. Because we're going to use that evidence. It could be, you know, maybe it, you lost your job or you, something happened with another employee. And these are the things that are mind effing yourself all the time. So you got to get in there and disrupt, okay, and keep looking for evidence that it's not going to happen again because it's so rare. I mean, are you kidding me, right? If you're sitting there fearful that an earthquake is going to hit you and there has never been one in your area in 100 years, that's crazy. What are you doing? But it's a, it's a real fear. So let's talk about it. Let's get some evidence on when the last time an earthquake hit your area. And then let's talk about it some more. And pretty soon, I have a feeling that you're going to talk yourself out of this fear. We don't know until it happens. Same thing with relationships. Same thing with your health. Same thing with all these other things that are happening in your life. Okay? So get some evidence. Um perfection mm, mm, mm. it's a great book by ryan holiday uh i want to say it's perfect is the enemy of good i believe i have that book and if anybody contacts me through the show here i'll send you a copy or through instagram i'll send you a free audio book of perfect is the enemy of good by ryan holiday it's true Perfect is impossible to achieve. Can't do it. Now, am I telling you not to strive for perfection? Absolutely. I'm trying. I want you to do that. I just don't want that to dominate your thoughts. What I want to dominate your thoughts is getting, finishing what you started, being better, learning, enjoying the journey giving it everything you have, all those things, and then evaluating and making yourself even better, okay? You're never going to start off perfect. No one ever starts off perfect. And if you continually strive for perfection, there's a good chance you're going to drive yourself crazy with fear, especially when you're doing new things because you probably won't try start it because you're afraid you're not going to be perfect. <sighs> Don't do that. It's the perfect formula for failure. Okay? Don't be afraid to fail. It's a good thing. It's important. Okay? So, stop trying to be perfect. Keep that, you know, you got to be thinking about it. And, um, and not let perfection dominate your your mindset. You know, it's interesting with social media, the way it is. A lot of people are posting on Instagram. Hey, Instagram. A lot of people are... Okay. A lot of people are uh, obviously on Facebook, all these different platforms, and they're making videos and pictures and all kind of stuff. But you know what's crazy? is that um, a lot of people are um, – um, oh, here we go. Um, are trying to make the picture, the video, or whatever they're doing perfect before they put it up. Guess what? No one cares. I've even had people close to me say, Arnie, you can't put those videos up. They're not professional. And I'm going, 
you should check out so and so. They have a that's what you should do. I'm thinking, oh my God. They're in a professional studio. And do you realize how many people on social media fake pictures? They'll jump on a, an airfield, private jet field, and stand by a private jet with a handful of ones and throw them up in the air to act like they're one of these guru guys with a private jet. They'll jump over a fence and do that. Really? Or they'll, some, I've known some people will actually rent an office to do a, a shoot. Really? To me, that's not genuine, guys. I mean, people want to know where you're at. It's okay. Look, I'm not selling anything. I'm selling opportunity to be better. To be better. Hey, Marco, how you doing, buddy? Um, and that's the key here. Um, just to be better. Be genuine. Be real. People want to deal with real people. They don't want to deal with people that are phony. It's just, that's just the way it is. And, but there's a lot of that going on out there and just be who you are. Just like, I love talking to people that, um, let's say they lose weight and I have a young man I'm coaching now. He's just lost uh, 50 pounds and he wants to lose another 50 pounds. It's a lot. He was a football player in college. So he wants to lose some more weight. And I go, man, when you're done with this, or, or even now, you could write it on a postcard, a little index card, five things, like something like this. You could write five things to do to lose weight. Mm -hmm, I guess, yeah, I could. Now, the thing about him that he's learning is what things specifically work for him because he was confused. And so I had him look at some things with food, with his blood type. And which he's one of the first people I worked with in years that knew his blood type, just like that. And so I started nailing his foods that he can and can't eat. And he goes, oh, I can't do that. I knew that. Can't do that. I knew that. So I actually told him his assignment for tomorrow is to find out the type of exercise that works best for him. He already texted me uh, yesterday. He said, man, you're going to be surprised what I found. Oops. What I found, for whatever reason, Instagram kicked me. Oh, my God. I don't want to lose. Hang on. Hang on, guys. I know we're getting close here. Um, if it doesn't let me come back. Oh, man. Look at that. Oh, well. We'll go live again. We'll play with it. Um, sorry about that. We got kicked off of Instagram. They must not like me tonight. So, um, but, Yeah. But now he's actually learning, and he was smart enough to look me up and say, I was getting a little uncomfortable with my friends because I only knew so much because he's only 21. He's only, but I went through that when I was 21. I was giving out information that my coach gave me. He wants to learn what's best for him, and now he's learning what things work best for him. And that's what you need to do learn what's best for you and that will help to eliminate the fears that we have of being perfect okay and then uh, a couple things here we're going to run by a little quicker um uh instead of seeing the worst and i already talked about this earlier see the good pick out all the good things that could come out of your situation new friends new place to live new job new something see the good stuff I don't know what it is, you know, relationship, the opportunity to, to be in a better relationship. Okay. Little things, you know, um, you've got to see the good stuff. Focus on the good stuff. Uh Oh, hurdles there. I know her. And then, um, so is now we got people jumping on here. Something was going on with Instagram earlier. I think, um, CC who knows. And, um, Either way, um, so see the good stuff. And then how about share with some that you trust? This is big. This is really important because if you don't trust somebody, okay, trust is big. That's one of my big values in life, trusting. But if you have somebody in your life that you can trust and share your deep, deep, dark secrets, 
That's a big thing. That's huge. This is not a man's thing. Usually men struggle with this. You know, I work hard with my clients to get them to share me their share with me their deep, dark secrets because uh, it's scary. It really is scary. And most people just don't like doing that. Not today. Not in this day and age. You know, then you have the other side where everybody's putting their whole freaking life story on Instagram or Facebook. It's like, really? What's the term? TMI? But some people want that TMI. It's like, yeah, they just share it all. Whatever. So I'm not um, too excited about sharing everything. But, um, um, oh, there you are. And then, um, so, so share. Find someone you can share with. And let's get back to the basics a little bit. Let's jump back to the basics of the strategy. How about getting better sleep? I know I struggle with this sometimes. If I'm not getting enough sleep, quality sleep, I feel it. I know I can, and I, and I strive for that. I work at it. And um, it's not as easy as people think. So sleep is important. Eating better. You know, if you're eating a bunch of junk food, I talk to people, oh, so many times. Because this is, again, this is the area that I'm a specialist in. Eating, health stuff. Um, and when you're eating foods that that are disruptive to your system and they cause digestive problems and all other th things, they may cause too much stimulation in your head. Um, man, that's not worth it, especially when you're trying to get some rest. They'll be disruptive or you're trying to work. So the basics, find, find the foods that work for you. Sleep better. Exercise. Exercise. Remember we talked about that earlier? You know, you know, disruption here, time out. But that's the basic stuff. Exercise. You know, gratitude. All that good stuff. It works. It really does. Take the focus off yourself. Put it on to somebody else. You'd be surprised what happens. And then lastly, how about this? Nurture yourself. Nurture yourself. Schedule time. I schedule time in my day, in my week to exercise, to take a sauna or a number of saunas, to make sure I have good quality food to eat, to work in my adventures. Like I told you earlier about going to the Grand Canyon. I work those things in. I schedule them because you know what? If I don't schedule going to the Grand Canyon, like I have two more trips planned this year, two more. And if I don't schedule those and something comes up, like my daughter was talking about her anniversary and I said, yeah, I'm going to be at the Grand Canyon the following weekend. So that's a good weekend because I thought she was going to have to have me choose and it would might've been a tough and I might've done it because I might've just gone earlier, but I wouldn't need to know because I'm going to schedule it. Because that's time to nurture myself mentally, emotionally, and physically. You need to do the same thing. If you don't put the big things in first, and then we're going to get to our um, uh, tips. But it's like a big jar. And you want to put the, the big things in your life in first. The big rocks. Health. Okay? That's a big one. All right? Relationships. Put them in there. And then you want to put the little things in there, you know, little things in there, little smaller rocks, put them in there. And then finally, when you've got all the things in there that are important, you pour in everything else, which is the sand. And the sand will fill up all the little crevices between the rocks and the little rocks. And then you have a full, compact life. The problem is everybody puts the sand in first, then you can't put all the rocks in. And you're incomplete and you don't feel good about yourself because you're not nurturing yourself. And most people, women, I'm shaking my finger at you. You're the guiltiest here. You don't take care of yourself. I had a great client, I mean, talk to me this week about how we were talking about this topic right here. Nutrition and exercise and taking care of himself. And he's getting it because, because he just turned 51. He's getting it. 
He knows. He just had to have colon surgery. He got scared. Okay? I don't want you to get scared. I want you just to do it. All right. So let's look at um, let's look at our three tips of the week. So I hope that that helps with fear. Fear can be managed if you want to manage it. Or fear, or fear can eat you like a tiger in the jungle if you let it. It's your choice. Okay? Take the advice of Coach Arnie and you take care of fear. Take care of fear. Manage it. Control it. Tame it. Because it's always going to be there. It's a real emotion. Health tip of the week. Relax. How about that? How about just relax? Take some time out. Put your feet up. Go for a walk. Do something that's relaxing. Reduce your stress. Listen to some music. Pray. Meditate. Go take a sauna. Something to help you just to decompress. Life is go, 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 go. Decompress. And I hear this all the time. I don't have time. Well, I used to say the same thing. Now I make time. And it's the only thing you can do. Make time. Get over it. Build some evidence that you can make time. Get up 30 minutes earlier. And I'm not saying cut your sleep short. Maybe you need to go to bed 30 minutes earlier. I did that a year ago. I started going to bed an hour earlier. You can do it. I did it. Never thought I could. And um, to decompress. Health tip. Uh, love or relationship tip. Find the good. We've been talking about that all night. So I'm going to beat it in your head again. Find the good in somebody. If if they are a significant other in your life, quit picking. Quit poking and look for the good things. I don't care it's how they smile. I don't care what I don't care what anything good. You embrace the good. Look for the good. It will make a huge difference in your relationship. I promise you. So quit picking, quit poking, and look for the good. It works every single time. And there's actually a strategy that I'll bring up at a later time uh, with that that's a really neat gift. It's a gift that you can use. Um, so I'm just making a note here. All right. And then the life tip. Surround yourself with love. I was talking with somebody today at a memory facility. And I said, you know what's amazing? is when people here are surrounded by people that love them unconditionally, they are different. And I watched the lady who's been struggling lately. I mean struggling. I didn't think she was going to make it. And she was there with her grand, her daughter, her granddaughter, and her great-granddaughter. And it was like nothing was wrong with her. It was like, why was she even here? Is that how powerful love is? Yes, it is. I don't care if you're 90 or 19. If you surround yourself with genuine love, you will do better. Promise. Given. No argument. No discussion. You will be better. It's Love is that powerful. Next to exercise, it's the most powerful drug on the planet if we could ever put it in a pill. It's that powerful, and it works. That emotion, the, the emotion of love is the strongest emotion. Absolutely. And it will dominate fear if you let it. But most people let fear dominate love. So fear wins out most of the time, which is why most people are motivated by pain versus by pleasure. We all want things, but it doesn't. it usually takes fear or pain to get us to do anything. Stop that. Stop it. And let's, let's let love dominate. Let's let love inspire us. Man, if I could take, if I could have taken a picture of that lady's eyes or video and shown it to you guys, you'd have gone, wow. And compare and contrast to what she looked like just a few days ago. You'd have gone, man, are you kidding me? Yes, that's the truth. And that's how powerful it is. Okay, so that's your your life tip. Surround yourself with love. Good people that genuinely love you. I appreciate everybody for being here. And um, 
next week. I'm not sure, but we may be having a show on grief if I can get my guests to line up. And if not, uh, we'll be coming back to that anyways. In the meantime, please check me out on all the different platforms. Uh, but, or you can just Google me under Coach Arnie or Arnie Fonseca Jr. I'd love to touch base with you guys anytime. Give me a call, 602-390-9144, and let's talk. Thank you, CC, for, a, for being a, a great and gracious host. Appreciate you guys.